To continue the discussion, our next topic will be mirrors. A smooth and highly polished reflecting surface or a mirror, most commonly used are the plane mirrors. Lateral inversions in plane mirrors. The word ambulance is opposite because when the driver of the vehicle ahead of the ambulance looks in her or his mirror, the person can read it as ambulance and give way to it. Spherical mirrors. Suppose you are sitting at the dining table and you don't like the food, you start playing with the spoon. You look yourself in the spoon and you notice that you look pretty funny. The moment you get the spoon closer, you get a magnified image and when taken for, you see an inverted image. Do you know what's really happening? To understand what is happening, let us talk about the special class of mirrors known as spherical mirrors. Let us first understand the terms of spherical mirrors. First, we have the radius of curvature. It is the distance between the pole and the center of curvature. Center of curvature. The center of curvature of a spherical mirror is the point in the center of the mirror which passes through the curve of the mirror and has the same tangent and curvature at that point. Aperture. It is a point from which the reflection of light actually happens. Pole. Pole is the midpoint of a mirror. It's twice the focus. Focus. It is any point where light rays parallel to the principal axis will converge after reflecting from the mirror. Principal axis. An imaginary line passing through the optical center and the center of curvature of the spherical mirror. And lastly, we have the focal length. It is on the axis of a mirror where rays of light are parallel to the axis converged after reflection or refraction. Spherical mirrors are of two types. We have the convex mirror and the concave mirror. Concave mirror, we are familiar that the spherical mirrors are not plain. They are curved in one particular direction. They are curved inward. A concave mirror is also known as the converging mirror, as in this type of mirrors, light rays converge at a point after they strike and are getting reflecting back from the reflecting surface of the mirror. A concave mirror Produce. A concave mirror produces real and inverted images, except when the object is placed very near to the mirror that pull, and the focus where the image produced is virtual and erect. The concave mirror is used in shaving mirrors to see a large image of the face. It is also useful in vehicle headlights and torches. Dentists also use a concave mirror to get the bigger image of the teeth. Next, we have the convex mirror. The convex mirror has a reflective surface that curves outward. These mirrors are always form virtual, erect, and diminish regardless of the distance between the object and the mirror. When parallel rays of light strike the mirror, they are reflected in a way wherein they spread out or diverge. For this reason, a convex mirror is also a diverging mirror too. If these reflected rays are extended behind the mirror by dotted lines, they meet at a point. This point is the focus of the convex mirror. The concave mirror is used in the vehicle so that the driver is aware of the vehicle coming from behind. They are also used in streetlight reflectors. Eyeglasses. The need for some type of vision correction is very common. Common vision defects are easy to understand and some are simple to correct. In the picture, it illustrates the two common vision defects. We have first, the nearsightedness or myopia is the inability to see the distant objects clearly while close objects are clear. The eye overconverges the nearly parallel rays from a distant object and the rays cross in front of the retina. 
the distance to the farthest object that can be seen clearly is called the far point of the eye, normally infinity. Far-sightedness or hyperopia is the inability to see close objects clearly while distant objects may be clear. A far-sighted eye does not converge sufficient rays from a close object to make the rays meet on the retina. Less diverging rays from a distant object can be converged for a clear image. The distance to the closest object that can be seen clearly is called the near point of the eye, normally 25 cm. Since the near-sighted eye overconverges light rays, the correction for near-sightedness is to place a diverging spectacle lens in front of the eye. This reduces the power of an eye that is too powerful. Another way of thinking about this is that a diverging spectacle lens produces a case 3 image which is closer to the eye than the object. To determine the spectacle power needed for correction, you must know the person's far point. You must know the greatest distance at which the person can see clearly. Then, the image produced by a spectacle lens must be at this distance or closer for the nearsighted person to be able to see it clearly. It is worth noting that wearing glasses does not change the eye in any way. The eyeglasses lens is simply used to create an image of the object at a distance where the nearsighted person can see it clearly. Whereas, someone not wearing glasses can see clearly objects that fall between their near point and their far point. Someone wearing glasses can see images that fall between their near point and their far point. Since the far-sighted eye underconverges light rays, the correction for far-sightedness is to place a converging spectacle lens in front of the eye. This increases the power of an eye that is too weak. Another way of thinking about this is that a converging spectacle lens produces a case to image which is farther from the eye than the object. To determine the spectacle power needed for correction, you must know the person's near point. That is, you must know the smallest distance at which the person can see clearly. Then, the image produced by a spectacle lens must be at this distance or farther for the far-sighted person to be able to see it clearly.